Hey folks, Dr. Mike Israel here for Renaissance Periodization Strength Training Made Simple number 13. Holy crap, we have a lot of videos. How to prioritize specific lifts that you wanna work on. First question real quick is why should we prioritize? Well, you just wanna increase a certain lift uh, more than it has been. Like your squat's going up, your bench is going up, your deadlift is going up, but your deadlift's not going up as much as you want and your squat and bench are going up pretty fast. And someone's like, hey, what are you deadlifting? And you're like, well, I don't know. And you go home and you're like, man, I gotta get my deadlift up, right? It could be a consideration for, you know, oh, in competition, I'm always like, you know, the first to deadlift and it's embarrassing or my total could be higher if this one lift really came up. Totally all those things are valid, but really at the end of the day is you just wanna increase one lift more than the others. When you say more than the others, can't I just increase all my lifts? You can, but that always comes as a trade-off. If you train all the lifts the same amount, same effort, intensity, frequency, etc., they're all gonna go up a certain amount. And genetically, some are gonna go up faster than others. If you want one lift to go up faster, the other two lifts have to go up less fast period, less fast than they could have. It's always a trade-off. There is no way to maximize all lifts. There's a way to increase all lifts by just doing a good job, but to maximize any one lift, you have to minimize the other two lifts, plain and simple. All right, so to that end, let's say you're like, okay, fine, fine, fine. I need to get my bench press up. My squat and deadlift are good. I don't wanna just crap them out, but my bench needs to go up. What do I do? Well, we have a six-part plan for you. It's super simple, super straight to the point. If you're serious about maximizing a lift, it is not a matter of just benching a little bit more for like three weeks and testing your max. BS, you're not gonna get that on this channel. You're getting the works. Here we go. First, you wanna do a hypercaloric hypertrophy phase for the supporting muscles of that lift. So if someone comes to me and they're like, Dr. Mike, I need a bigger bench. The first thing I say is check this out. You weigh how much? They're like, uh, 180. I'm like, all right. I, in three months, I want you to weigh 190. And during those three months, and I want you to train for hypertrophy for strength, sets of five to 10. And I want you to make your chest and triceps and front delts bigger, much bigger, choosing lots of those kinds of exercises to target those muscles. Because the number one underlying truth behind a big bench is big ass pecs, big ass triceps, and big ass front delts. You know the guy that's benching the most at the meet when you walk in and he's weighing in, you're like, the fuck happened to that guy's upper chest? Fuck, thought I was gonna win this meet. Nope, not in bench press, you aren't. So first, build bigger muscles. And notice I said hypercaloric. A lot of people will do this, the hypertrophy phases, but they don't change in body weight. Where the hell are you supposed to be getting new muscle from? Thin air? No thanks. And even if you can recomp, not good enough. We want the best possible tools. We're gonna put on some weight. It works for every single lift. Now, number two. That prioritized lift or the muscle groups when you're training for hypertrophy, you're gonna train it more often. So however many times you've been benching, let's say you've been benching or doing push two times a week. If you're serious about increasing your bench, not only do you do point number one, but on point number two, you go at least one more, probably just one more to start. So three times a week. You might have to lower the volumes within each session a little bit to accommodate that, but generally higher frequency works super well, temporarily, not sustainably, to really increase a particular lift or get particular muscles bigger. So increase the frequency by one is point number two. Point number three, you're gonna have to make some room fatigue-wise for your body's recovery resources to float more towards the lift you want and less towards the others, which means you have to lower the volume of the other lift. It just has to happen, especially if the muscles involved are similar. For example, if you really, really, really wanna bring up your squat, you gotta bring your deadlift training down a little bit because if you just crank the deadlift as hard as possible, your glutes are tired, your hamstrings are tired, your posterior chain is tired, yeah, you can make gains in the squat, but you can make better gains if those muscles and movements were not as tired. Then your squat workouts could be amazing versus just really good and you get better gains. So make sure to pare things down just a little bit at least. You don't have to put stuff on maintenance, but at least on the back burner. Minimum effective volume, maybe not full maintenance. Full maintenance if you're completely serious though. So if you have to bring up your bench and your squat and deadlift are super solid, for a couple of months, you're gonna be putting your squat and deadlift on maintenance volumes and maintenance loads and so on and so forth and just really cranking your bench. That's absolutely a choice you can make. Number four, in most of the weekly sessions, when you train that prioritized lift or those muscle groups, you're gonna train them first, okay? So I've seen people say, oh, I wanna bring up my bench. I'm like, let me see your workout. And then like multiple workouts a week, it's like squats first, then pulls, because they're stronger at those and they really like them. And they bench last. Like, what do you think? Like, I think that if you're really serious about getting your bench up, the bench goes first. And they're like, ugh, then I'm tired for squats or whatever, or for deadlifts. Like, well, yeah, but who cares? Because you wanna bring up the bench, you wanna train it fresh, plain and simple. Point number five. The hardest session or sessions of that lift should be placed in the week after rest day or rest days. For example, if you really wanna bring up your bench 
and you train Monday through Friday, Saturday, Sunday off, guess what your biggest bench workout of the week is going to be? Guess when it's going to be? Monday, right? Because after two days off, you're fresh, you're ready, you're going to smash that bench workout. What you don't want is if you tell people you're serious about bringing up your bench, but like you bench like Thursday and like, you're like, why well, squat and deadlift Monday, and Tuesday? And they're like, but doesn't that mean that they're the freshest and they get the most work? And by the time you get to bench pressing Thursday, you're kind of just systemically tired. Like, yeah, but I don't bench that much. So it's like, well, that's why you don't bench that much. So definitely consider putting your best work in the days after that you've had the days off. That's a really good idea. And lastly, when you are choosing exercises, choose the ones that have the highest raw stimulus magnitudes, not necessarily the ones that have the best stimulus to fatigue ratios. Those are good too, but you've lowered all your other volumes so the fatigue isn't as big of a concern. Raw stimulus magnitude means exercises that while they may be fatiguing, crush you and really open up your abilities to get better. So if you say, man, I tell you what, every time I do deficit deadlifts, they bring my deadlift up like crazy, but they just mess up everything and benching kind of sucks and squatting kind of sucks. Well, guess what? If you're serious about bringing up your deadlift, bench and squat should be on the back burner anyway. It doesn't matter if you mess them up. You're going to be doing a whole lot of deficit deadlifts, big raw stimulus magnitude, the ability to improve a lift everything else be damned. Then you do a couple mesocycles of deficit pulls, you get back into regular deadlift and holy shit, I put on 30 pounds on my deadlift. Voila, through training it properly, folks, give this some thought, implement it if you'd like. We'll see you for the next video next time.